Dear friends in Christ, for five weeks of Lent, we have been preparing by works of charity and self-sacrifice for the celebration of our Lord's Paschal Mystery. Today, we come together to begin this solemn celebration in union with the whole church throughout the world. Christ entered in triumph into his own city to complete his work as our Messiah, to suffer, to die, and to rise again. Let us remember with devotion this century which began his saving work and follow him with a lively faith. United with him in his suffering on the cross, may we share his resurrection and new life. Let us pray. Almighty God, we pray you to bless these branches and make them holy. Today we joyfully acclaim Jesus, our Messiah and King. May we reach one day the happiness of the new and everlasting Jerusalem by faithfully following him who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. When the great crowd that had come to the feast heard that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem, they took palm branches and went out to meet him and cried out, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, the King of Israel. Jesus found an ass and sat upon it, as it is written, Fear no more, O daughter Zion. See, your king comes seated upon an ass's colt. His disciples did not understand this at first, but when Jesus had been glorified, they remembered that these things were written about him and that they had done this for him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus Christ. Christ. Let us go forth in peace, praising Jesus our Messiah, as did the crowds who welcomed him to Jerusalem. Let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, you've given the human race Jesus Christ, our Savior, as a model of humility. He fulfilled your will by becoming man and giving his life on the cross. Help us to bear witness to you by following his example of suffering and make us worthy to share in his resurrection. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The Lord God has given me a well-trained tongue, then I might know how to speak to the weary a word that will rouse them. Morning after morning he opens my ear that I may hear, and I have not rebelled, have not turned back. I gave my back to those who beat me, my cheeks to those who plucked my beard. My face I did not shield from buffets and spitting. The Lord God is my help, therefore I am not disgraced. I have set my face like flint, knowing that I shall not be put to shame. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Curl their lips 
and toss their heads. He trusted in the Lord. Let God save him. Let God release him if this is God's friend. My God, my God, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me, forsaken me? Many dogs surround me, and wicked men assault me. They tear holes in my hands and my feet. I can count every one of my bones. My God, my God, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me, forsaken me, my God, my God? They divide my clothes among them. They cast lots for my robes. Oh, Lord, do not leave me alone. You are my strength. Make haste to help me. My God, my God, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me, forsaken me, my God, my God? A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Christ Jesus, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God something to be grasped. Rather, he emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, coming in human likeness and found human in appearance. He humbled himself, becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on the cross. Because of this, God greatly exalted him, and bestowed on him the name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bend of those in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father, the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Jesus. 
Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. The Passion of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. The Feast of Passover and Unleavened Bread were to be observed in two days' time, and therefore the chief priests and scribes began to look for a way to arrest Jesus by some trick and kill him. Yet they pointed out, Not during the festival, or the people may riot. When Jesus was in Bethany, reclining at table in the house of Simon the leper, a woman entered carrying an alabaster jar of perfume made from expensive aromatic nard. Breaking the jar, she began to pour the perfume on his head. Some were saying to themselves indignantly, What is the point of this extravagant waste of perfume? It could have been sold for over 300 silver pieces and the money given to the poor. They were infuriated at her, but Jesus said, Let her alone. Why do you criticize her? She has done me a kindness. The poor you will always have with you, and you can be generous to them whenever you wish, but you will not always have me. She has done what she could. By perfuming my body, she is anticipating its preparation for burial. I assure you, wherever the good news is proclaimed throughout the world, what she has done will be told in her memory. Then Judas Iscariot, one of the twelve, went off to the chief priests to hand Jesus over to them. Hearing what he had to say, they were jubilant and promised to give him money. He, for his part, kept looking for an opportune way to hand him over. On the first day of unleavened bread, when it was customary to sacrifice the Paschal lamb, his disciples said to him, Where do you wish us to go to prepare the Passover supper for you? He sent two of his disciples with these instructions. Go into the city, and you will come upon a man carrying a water jar. Follow him. Whatever house he enters, say to the owner. The teacher asks, where is my guest room where I may eat the Passover with my disciples? Then he will show you an upstairs room, spacious, furnished, and all in order. That is the place you are to get ready for us. The disciples went off. When they reached the city, they found it just as he had told them, and they prepared the Passover supper. As it grew dark, he arrived with the twelve. They reclined at table, and in the course of the meal, Jesus said, I give you my word, one of you is about to betray me. Yes, one who is eating with me. They began to say to him sorrowfully, one by one, Surely not I. It is one of the twelve, a man who dips into the dish with me. The Son of Man is going the way the Scripture tells of him. Still, accursed by that man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed, it were better for him that he had never been born. During the meal, he took bread, blessed and broke it, and gave it to them. Take this. This is my body. He likewise took a cup, gave thanks, and passed it to them, and they all drank from it. This is my blood, the blood of the covenant, to be poured out on behalf of many. I solemnly assure you, I will never again drink of the fruit of the vine until the day when I drink it in the reign of God. After singing songs of praise, they walked out to the Mount of Olives. Jesus then said to them, Your faith in me shall be shaken, for scripture has it. I will strike the shepherd and the sheep will be dispersed. But after I am raised up, I will go to Galilee ahead of you. Peter said to him, Even though all of you are shaken in faith, it will not be that way with me. I give you my assurance, this very night, before the cock crows twice, you will deny me three times. But Peter kept reasserting vehemently, Even if I have to die with you, I will not disown you. They all said the same. They went then to a place named Gethsemane. Sit down here while I pray. At the same time, he took along with him Peter, James, and John. Then he began to be filled with fear and distress. He said to them, My heart is filled with sorrow to the point of death. Remain here and stay awake. He advanced a little and fell to the ground, praying that if it were possible, this hour might pass him by. He kept saying, Abba, O Father, you have the power to do all things. Take this cup away from me, but let it be as you would have it, not as I. When he returned, he found them asleep. He said to Peter, Asleep, Simon? You could not stay awake for even an hour. Be on guard and pray that you may not be put to the test. The spirit is willing, but nature is weak. Going back again, he began to pray in the same words. Once again, he found them asleep on his return. 
They could not keep their eyes open, nor did they know what to say to him. He returned a third time and said to them, Still sleeping, still talking your ease. It will have to do. The hour is on us. You will see that the Son of Man is to be handed over into the clutches of evil men. Rouse yourselves and come along. See, my betrayer is near. Even while he was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, made his appearance accompanied by a crowd with swords and clubs. These people had been sent by the chief priests, the scribes, and the elders. The betrayer had arranged a signal for them, saying, The man I shall embrace is the one. Arrest him and lead him away, taking every precaution. He then went directly over to him and said, Rabbi, and embraced him. At this, they laid hands on him and arrested him. One of the bystanders drew his sword and struck the high priest's slave, cutting off his ear. Addressing himself to them, Jesus said, You have come out to arrest me, armed with swords and clubs, as if I were a brigand. I was within your reach daily, teaching in the temple precincts. Yet, you never arrested me, but now so that the scriptures may be fulfilled. With that, all deserted him and fled. There was a young man following him who was covered by nothing but a linen cloth. As they seized him, he left the cloth behind and ran off naked. Then they led Jesus off to the high priest, and all the chief priests, the elders, and the scribes came together. Peter followed him at a distance right into the high priest's courtyard, where he found the seat with the temple guard and began to warm himself at the fire. The chief priests with the whole Sanhedrin were busy soliciting testimony against Jesus that would lead to his death, but they could not find any. Many spoke against him falsely under oath, but their testimony did not agree. Some, for instance, on taking the stand, testified falsely by alleging, We heard him declare, I will destroy this temple made by human hands, and in three days I will construct another not made by human hands. Even so, their testimony did not agree. The high priest rose to his feet before the court and began to interrogate Jesus. Have you no answer to what these men testify against you? But Jesus remained silent. He made no reply. Once again, the high priest interrogated him. Are you the Messiah, the Son of the Blessed One? I am, and you will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of the power and coming with the clouds of heaven. At that, the high priest tore his robes and said, What further need do we to have of witnesses? You have heard the blasphemy. What is your verdict? They all concurred in the verdict guilty with its sentence of death. Some of them then began to spit on him. They blindfolded him and hit him, saying, Play the prophet, while the officers manhandled him. While Peter was down in the courtyard, one of the servant girls of the high priest came along. When she noticed Peter warming himself, she looked more closely at him and said, You too were with Jesus of Nazareth. But he denied it. I don't know what you're talking about. What are you getting at? Then he went out into the gateway. At that moment, a rooster crowed. The servant girl, keeping an eye on him, started again to tell the bystanders, this man is one of them. Once again, he denied it. A little later, the bystanders said to Peter once more, you are certainly one of them. You're a Galilean, are you not? He began to curse and to swear. I don't even know the man you're talking about. Just then, a second cock crow was heard and Peter recalled the prediction Jesus had made to him, before the cock crows twice, you will disown me three times. He broke down and began to cry. As soon as it was daybreak, the chief priest, with the elders and scribes, that is the whole Sanhedrin, reached the decision. They bound Jesus, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate. Pilate interrogated him. Are you the king of the Jews? You are the one who is saying it. The chief priests, meanwhile, brought many accusations against him. Pilate interrogated him again. Surely you have some answer. See how many accusations they are leveling against you. But greatly to Pilate's surprise, Jesus made no further response. Now on the occasion of a festival, he would release for them one prisoner, any man they asked for. There was a prisoner named Barabbas, jailed along with the rebels who had committed murder in the uprising. When the crowd came up to press their demand that he honor the custom, Pilate rejoined, Do you want me to release the king of the Jews for you? He was aware, of course, that it was out of jealousy that the chief priests had handed him over. 
Meanwhile, the chief priests incited the crowd to have him release Barabbas instead. Pilate asked them again, What am I to do with the man you call the king of the Jews? They shouted back, Crucify him. Pilate protested. Why? What crime has he committed? They only shouted the louder, Crucify him. So Pilate, who wished to satisfy the crowd, released Barabbas to them, and after he had Jesus scourged, he handed him over to be crucified. The soldiers now, now led Jesus away into the hall, known as the Praetorium. At the same time, they assembled the whole co cohort. They dressed him in royal purple, then wove a crown of thorns and put it on him, and began to salute him, all hail, King of the Jews, continually striking Jesus on the head with the reed and spitting at him. They genuflected before him and pretended to pay him homage. When they had finished mocking him, they stripped him of the purple, dressed him in his own clothes, and let him out to crucify him. A man named Simon of Cyrene, the father of Alexander and Rufus, was coming in from the fields, and they pressed him into service to carry the cross. When they brought Jesus to the site of Golgotha, which means skull place, they tried to give him wine drugged with myrrh, but he would not take it. Then they crucified him and divided up his garments by rolling dice for them to see what each would take. It was about nine in the morning when they crucified him. The inscription proclaiming his offense read, the King of the Jews. With him, they crucified two insurgents, one at his right and one on his left. People going by kept insulting him, tossing their heads and saying, ha ha, you are going to destroy the temple and rebuild it in three days. Save yourself now by coming down from that cross. The chief priests and the scribes also joined in and jeered. He saved others, but he cannot save himself. Let the Messiah, the King of Israel, come down from that cross here so that we can see it and believe in him. The men who had been crucified with him likewise kept taunting him. When noon came, darkness fell on the whole countryside and lasted until mid-afternoon. At that time, Jesus cried in a loud voice, Elo, Elo, lama sabachthani, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? A few of the bystanders who heard it remarked, Listen, he is calling on Elijah. Someone ran off and soaking a sponge in sour wine, stuck it on a reed to try to make him drink. The man said, Now let's see whether Elijah comes to take him down. Then Jesus, uttering a loud cry, breathed his last. At that moment, the curtain in the sanctuary was torn in two from top to bottom. The centurion who stood guard over him on seeing the manner of his death declared, Clearly, this man was the Son of God. There were also women present looking on from a distance. Among them were Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James the younger, and Joseph and Salome. These women had followed Jesus when he was in Galilee and attended to his needs. There were also many others who had come up with him to Jerusalem. As it grew dark, it was preparation day, that is, the eve of the Sabbath. Joseph from Arimathea arrived, a distinguished member of the Sanhedrin. He was another who looked forward to the reign of God. He was bold enough to seek an audience with Pilate and urgently requested the body of Jesus. Pilate was surprised that Jesus should have died so soon. He summoned the centurion and inquired whether Jesus was already dead. Learning from him that he was dead, Pilate released the corpse to Joseph. Then having bought a linen shroud, Joseph took him down, wrapped him in the linen, and laid him in a tomb which had been cut out of rock. Finally, he rolled a stone across the entrance of the tomb. Meanwhile, Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of Joseph, observed where he had been laid. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you. Jesus Christ. There's really not much to be said after the gospel that kind of says everything. I'd just like to invite you to um, join us for the Triduum on Holy Thursday. It'll be at 7 o'clock, both live and um, on the social media. Good Friday will be 1 o'clock. And Easter, we're doing two things. The Easter Vigil, which will be at 8 o'clock on Holy Saturday night, as well as it will be broadcast during the day on Easter. And also there is a 10.30 Children's Mass, which will be broadcast 
uh, over the internet, but also if um, we also have it live where the children will really, really um, hopefully have a wonderful Easter thanks to the wonderful parish that we belong to. I'd just like to just kind of wrap up what happened today in the, the gospel. It's simply this. We were never promised an easy life. We were never promised that life would be fair as we see in today's gospel. But the one thing Jesus not only promised us, but he showed us is this. He guaranteed us that we would have a safe journey home. And that, I remind you, is what Easter is all about. It's about a safe journey home. God bless. Please stand now as we offer these petitions. For church leaders, may they lead their flock with love, understanding, and acceptance, and always protect the marginalized. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For all those who struggle to believe or whose faith encounters resistance, may they find peace and courage and continue to proclaim their faith. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For our parish family, may the blessed palms be a reminder of the passion of Christ, causing us to bear witness to Christ in our words and our deeds. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For the sick, the poor, the lonely, and the hopeless, may they be comforted by God's promise of mercy, triumph, and redemption. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For those who have died, may they rise again to see God's face in glory. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Loving God, we thank you for the faith we share. May we continue to grow in our love for you through Christ our Lord. creation through your goodness we have this bread to give you which earth is given and human hands have made it will become for us the bread of life blessed are you lord god of all creation through your goodness we have this wine to give you fruit of the vine work of human hands it will become our spiritual drink blessed be god forever Friends, let us pray that our gifts will be acceptable to God, our loving Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at our hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of God's holy church. Through the passion of your only begotten Son, O Lord, may our reconciliation with you be near at hand, so that we do not merit it by our own deeds, yet by the sacrifice made once and for all, we may already feel the effects of your love and mercy through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. Father, it is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. For though innocent, he suffered willingly for sinners and accepted unjust condemnation to save the guilty. His death has washed away our sins and his resurrection has purchased our justification. So we truly join our loved ones in heaven as we pray this hymn of unending praise. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full, are full of your glory. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes, who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord, Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, 
He took bread and giving thanks, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. Similar way when supper was ended, took the chalice and once more giving thanks, gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Lord, remember your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Joseph, our Bishop. Remember Sam Maranka, Matthew Davis, Jr., Michael J. Naples, Charles Foy, Jr., Frank Colella, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that they who are united with your son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection for all those who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that together with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, Joseph, her husband, the apostles, the martyrs, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages. May we merit to be co-heirs to eternal life. May we praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen, amen, amen. Let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our day, that by the help of your mercy we may be free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await with joyful hope the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace, I leave you my peace, I give you. Look not on our sin, but on the faith of the church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of our Lord be with each one of you. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace.
Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Let us pray. Lord, you have satisfied our hunger with this Eucharistic food. The death of your Son gives us hope and strengthens our faith. May his resurrection give us perseverance and lead us to salvation through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May God's blessing truly guide our journey, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. I have fixed my eyes on your hills, Jerusalem, my destiny. Though I cannot see the end for me, I cannot turn away. We have set our hearts for the way. This journey is our destiny. Let no one walk alone. The journey makes us one. Other spirits, lesser gods, have courted me with lies. Here among you I have found the truth which bids me rise. I have fixed my eyes on your hills, Jerusalem, my destiny. Though I cannot see the end for me, I cannot turn away. We have set our hearts for the way. This journey is our
our destiny. Let 